Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. A couple of weeks ago, I did a video on my concerns about House of the Dragon and how there was a possibility that they would squeeze the story into just three seasons instead of the four seasons that George R. R. Martin had said he felt was needed to tell the story. And this came on the heels of them already cutting the episodes down for next season from 10 to 8. It got me thinking a bit about the direction some TV series are taking now. There's a trend where shows are going lighter on character development and taking paths where plots are not as intricate. There's less build up to conflict, and instead we're often rushing from one big event to the next. It's less journey and more destination. Right now, we're still amidst what has been called the golden age of television. This era began in 1999 with The Sopranos and later included shows like Six Feet Under, The Wire, The Shield, Mad Men, Game of Thrones, and Breaking Bad, just to name a few. These series offered in-depth character studies and intricate journeys. They didn't just rush to the next big plot point or wow moment. While it might sound funny now to say that The Sopranos was a risky show, at the time it was. Not only did they present the first real main character who was an anti-hero, but the show injected long-form narrative into television. And while Mafia films had been greatly successful from The Godfather to Goodfellas, The Sopranos was cut from a different cloth. The very first scene of the show is Tony Soprano walking into a psychiatrist's office. And when it comes to character development, few series were as good as Six Feet Under. Each person we're introduced to is deeply fleshed out. It's one reason I think the final episode is the best of any television series. All of that character work paid off. We care about these people and understand their limitations and flaws. And it's what makes the final scene perfection. The Golden Age has also brought shows that push the boundaries like Californication. It's a well-written comedy about a man who knows what he wants, but also realizes that his own personal demons will always be a hurdle for him attaining it. Some of the top shows during this era might have gone on too long or didn't end well at all, while others went out on top. But they all began strong with carefully constructed narratives and characters. And that's why I'm a little concerned when looking at two of the current marquee shows that completed their first seasons, House of the Dragon and The Last of Us. Now, when it comes to House of the Dragon, I largely gave them a pass on their first season and all the time jumps because the showrunners were in a unique position that they needed to win back an audience disillusioned with Game of Thrones. And the story was tricky, tying together different periods before getting to the main story. But as I said in a previous video, looking ahead to the remainder of the series, I think to make the story of the Dance of the Dragons meaningful, the pacing needs to be slowed down and we have to become more invested in the characters. But when it comes to The Last of Us, I'm not as forgiving. Yes, it was highly acclaimed by the critics, as you can see by this snapshot on Rotten Tomatoes, and it was also well-received by the audience. But I think it could have been much more if they really fleshed out their characters and didn't just keep rushing to the next big thing. At times, it felt like they were crossing off checkpoints in a video game. Episode 3 of The Last of Us is the sort of good writing that we have seen in the best shows in the Golden Age. We get an in-depth look at the characters Bill and Frank their relationship, and also how they endured during the apocalypse. I think the writing and the overall premise of this episode would have made a great foundation for a movie. But the problem is, is that The Last of Us doesn't continue with this level of intricate storytelling. And what's even more awkward is that after we get an in-depth character study of Bill and Frank, they're killed off in the same episode. Now this would have been fine if the showrunners had taken their time in the same way with all the characters. At the point where Joel and Ellie find Bill and Frank dead, I think they could have presented a deeper, more thorough and comprehensive view of their struggles, not only in the apocalypse, but with their own demons. We saw this in Game of Thrones with the travels of Arya and the Hound, or Jon's extended time with the Wildlings. But it's jarring when Joel and Ellie go from the outskirts of Boston in episode three to Kansas City in episode four in what Ellie describes as less than two days. That's making good time today in the real world, let alone during the apocalypse when the infrastructure would be degraded and countless obstacles would be in their way. Yeah, this is something that The Walking Dead even got right. After Kansas City, The Last of Us just quickly hops from spot to spot on the map, 
briefly encountering the major challenges that were presented in the video game it's adapted from, until we hurried to the conclusion. They basically took what could have been about two seasons of story and crammed it into just one. Overall, though, it's not a bad experience. But it's like the difference between fast food and a full meal. You can enjoy the fast food from time to time, but you don't want to live off of it. And my concern is that TV series could continue to follow this trend and just give us more superficial stories. Some of this is due to streaming, where there's just so much content out there now and so many different channels. You grab people's attention with flashy shows and ones that move more quickly than taking the time for a slow burn approach like Better Call Saul. The main reason for my heightened concern is that not too many critics pointed out the fast pacing when it came to The Last of Us, and this was disappointing. Perhaps it because they had the unique opportunity to see the entire series before it even aired, so they essentially streamed the show that the rest of us watch week to week. Not only is that a different sort of viewing experience, but I'm sure they all appreciated how this sort of access made it much easier for them to cover and review The Last of Us. And we know how wanting to maintain access has sometimes tainted the media when it comes to something like politics. Now, there's a fast-paced series that jumps quickly from challenge to challenge, and that's Netflix's Alice in Borderland. And it's a very compelling show, but the quickly moving events are part of the plot. The characters are forced to compete in a rapid succession of life or death games. If they don't join when their time is up, then they're killed. So this swift pacing is essential to the plot. But Alice in Borderland is the rare exception. Most shows aren't built around such a premise. I think the next season of House of the Dragon is critical. The Dance of the Dragons is a bloody, costly time. They could bounce from one big battle to the next. But it will all be more meaningful if they just take their time. I think it's also an important benchmark for TV. The early seasons of Game of Thrones were built around character development and complex, intertwined plots. If a franchise known for that sort of storytelling and world building takes a less in-depth route, then I think it could continue to accelerate a trend toward more superficiality. One of the more recent well-written shows, Succession, is ending their run. Are we now entering a time in which we're marking the end of high-quality television? No, I don't think so, but there are warning signs we need to pay attention to. As streaming services continue to expand and the choices for the viewers become overabundant, I hope creators continue the approach that started this era, well-constructed, long-form narrative that isn't reticent to take their time to build characters and provide a long, fulfilling journey. So that's it for this one. If you enjoyed the video, hit the like button. And if you haven't done so already, listen to Caraxes and subscribe. I want to thank everyone for watching, and I'll see you soon.